Alright, so before giving alternate representations of the real line and then introducing um, just a bit more of these special sets, I'd like to discuss interval notation. So I'll begin with a closed interval, which we see this right-facing square bracket, A, comma B, left-facing square bracket, is defined as all numbers x such that a is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to b, where a and b are real numbers. So just to kind of get this idea across, um, we can draw on a number line where we have the left bound of a and the right bound of b. Um, I've drawn um, closed circles at each boundary just to signify that we can plug them in and I've drawn this red line just to kind of emphasize the area in which we're working with and so this entire area is just all rational or irrational numbers that are between these two points so let's say that we have a equal to 3 and b equals 5 then we're going to be dealing with all of these rational and irrational numbers that are between 3 and 5. So, you know, um, 3 is contained in this interval since we can plug in these endpoints. 5 is contained in this interval since we can deal with these endpoints. 4.3172 and so on and so forth is within this, within this interval as well. And the way I like to think about these boundaries is kind of like a fence that we can hit, right? So if we run, um, if we run towards B, or rather in this example 5, then boom, we can hit that fence. And likewise, if we run towards A, which is 3 in this example, boom, we can hit that fence. Um, while also tripping over a bunch of these other numbers. In between, of course. All right, so the next interval that we're going to discuss is the half-closed and half-open interval. So we see that that is the uh, right-facing square bracket, A, comma, B, left-facing circular bracket, uh, and that is defined as X such that A is less than or equal to X, which is less than B. So we see that we have this strict inequality here um, for the x and b relation. So uh, the last note is that a and b are real numbers. So to get this idea across, we have a similar number line to before, except now we can never hit this fence, which resides at, right? We can get super, super close, but we can't actually get to that endpoint. So if we consider A to be 3 and B to be 5, we can never get to 5. We can, you know, deal with 4.99, 4.9999, and so on and so forth, but never, never actually getting to the explicit 5. Now, of course, we can still hit the, the 3 fence, and, of course, all other numbers um, in between these two quantities, right? In between 3 and 5. So now um, we see in this new notation, this half open, half closed interval, that I've scrapped the A comma B belonging to R statement. Um, this is typical fashion. We assume that A and B are fixed real numbers um, unless otherwise stated. So just thought I'd introduce um, to this notation as well um, instead of constantly being overly formal. So, so now to discuss this half open, half closed interval, we see that we have this um, right facing circular bracket, A comma B, left facing square bracket and is defined as x such that a is less than x which is less than or equal to b 
And this will be similar to the, um, you know, how uh, the half-closed, half-open interval works, except this time we have this that strict inequality with the lower bound, A. So we'll always be approaching A, but never actually hitting it. So if A equals 3, boom, we'll always get closer and closer and closer as we head to the left, but never actually get to that point. Just like in the previous example, we could never get to B equals 5, right? Always just getting closer and closer and closer. But of course, um, we can deal with the upper bound. Um, so if A equals 3, just to bring that back, right, we can absolutely deal with X equal to 5 since this is inclusive. So this last bit of interval notation um, is an open set. So we see that we have parentheses a comma b. And that's defined as all x such that a is strictly less than x, which is strictly less than b. So now we can't, we can't hit either of these endpoints, right? So instead of being able to hit one of these fences that we were talking about before, now we're just going to keep getting closer and closer and closer as we try to approach these endpoints, but never actually being able to get there. Um, I think for anyone who's played Super Mario 64, a good example is before you've gotten the right amount of stars to battle the third Bowser, at least I think it's the third Bowser, um, you have that infinite staircase um, that you can't get up unless, of course, maybe you glitch or get the right amount of stars. Um, and you're just constantly running, just running, 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 and never getting anywhere. So you can think of um, of our fences in that fashion for the open interval. All right, so now that we have introduced interval notation, we can show a few more representations of the real line. Um, so uh, notice that I wrote that the real line is equal to the union of the rational numbers and the irrational numbers, which we can also represent as x, such that x is bounded strictly by negative infinity and infinity, which is equivalent to the open interval from negative infinity to infinity, right? Negative infinity, comma, infinity. Now, infinity <clears throat> and infinity are just concepts, right? This negative infinity is just, you know, getting arbitrarily large in the negative realm, right? If we think of magnitude, we can think of, okay, one, two, three, and so on and so forth, ad infinitum, um, and just slap a negative onto all those quantities, so going, going to the left, right? Um, and then with infinity, right, that's, you know, just getting arbitrarily large, just going, just going and going and going and dealing with any of these rational or irrational numbers. But since they're just concepts, we can never plug them in, right? And infinity is just this abstract idea. It's not a number. This is just a way of expressing, okay, we're dealing with just any of these any of these numbers, and it can be, you know, um, magnitude-wise, arbitrarily big to slap a negative or positive on it, and we're just not designating uh, where it stops because it can't. We just can we can just keep adding on. So, yet another way in which we can represent the real line is as the open interval from negative infinity to zero, union, the set containing zero, union, the open interval from zero to infinity. And I try to give a bit of a representation here where we have all these real, um, 
all these real negative numbers right going to the left and all these real positive numbers going to the right but neither of these sets contains zero so I know this was a lot but um, you know there's essentially a little crash course on material that will be used in future videos on this channel so you know take your time with it um, definitely um, you know post if you have any questions but I hope this is helpful to you and I will I will catch you in the next video